Hello there, in this video I'm going to kind of try to close up um, kinetic energy and uh, talk a little bit about potential energy. And uh, when I say potential energy, I'm referring to an object that's being held up by, from uh, working against gravity, not potential energy in like a spring or something. Uh, that's a bit more complicated, we'll get to that later. Um, okay, so I also mentioned here uh, the kinetic energy is the mass and the velocity squared over 2. That should kind of make sense, right? Because you figure the mass of something, how big it is, how much stuff there is in it, is going to play a big part in uh, how much it hurts when you get hit with it. But an even bigger part is going to be how fast it's moving, or how fast it's moving, right? That's why a bullet, you might think, you might kind of say, has a more energy than just a bowling ball that's moving slowly. Velocity plays a big part. And it's just kind of half of that. So, I don't know, maybe that'll help you remember the equation, but really I hope you can kind of remember that you just kind of plug in for A in this in this mess right here. Um, another thing that I just wanted to mention is that the net work that you do, or the overall work that you do, say, to accelerate it from... Or, uh, nah, not really to accelerate it. Um, say the initial um, kinetic energy is 20 joules, say it's an, maybe, uh, er, 20 joules, so maybe it's moving, uh, maybe 20 joules of work are being applied in this direction, or joules isn't really a vector, so, uh, say something has 20 joules of energy moving in this direction, uh, the net work that you did uh, say, uh, or sorry, I'm sorry, say you apply a force and you, uh, increase the kinetic energy by either, um, basically by increasing the velocity. Uh, say you do that and say it ends up at this 150 joules. Well then how much did it change? It went from 20 to 150, so that's, well actually this is a negative and this is a positive, but, uh, it went from 20 to 150, uh, so we get 130 joules. Oh, 130 joules. And, uh, that's equal to the network, the, <laughs> network, the overall work done on it, or the, uh, the change in kinetic energy, right? Hopefully that makes some sense. That the, uh, cause remember, work is, uh, like, uh, what was the definition that I gave you? I think it was, um, the transfer of energy to an object. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Uh, I'm checking my, w the slides that I'm reading off of. Um, but yeah, the, remember the work is the energy transferred to an object, so here, if this is the change in energy, or if it's the transfer of energy, well that makes sense that that should be equal to the work. So, the, uh, the net work that is done by um, on an object is going to be basically its change in kinetic energy. Okay, so let's kind of clear all that crap. The next topic I'm going to uh, talk about is potential energy. And uh, mainly what I'm going to talk about, or at least in this video, is uh, gravitational potential energy, or GPE. And that's basically um, if you have an apple, and you're holding that apple above the Earth's surface, well then, if you just let go of that apple, it's going to fall, right? So suddenly it's going to start moving, and if it starts moving, then it has kinetic energy. So where did it get that kin kinetic energy from? It got it from its potential energy. And it should kind of make sense that if you're standing on the ground, and you get hit in the head with something, well, it's going to hurt. Right? It's going to have some kind of energy, maybe it does some work on your head, it moves your head a little bit because it hits you kind of hard. But uh, again, gravitational um, uh, potential energy is measured in joules, all work is measured in joules, all energy is measured in joules. But uh, this is actually a, a really, really simple thing to solve. Uh, or rather, a really, really simple thing to just come up with if you can't remember um, the formula for it. So, uh, let's kind of work out work this out. Um, so what factors, 
just let's imagine that something gets dropped on your head. What factors would uh, make it hurt more or less? Well, let's see. The uh, how much it weighs, or rather, how not. Oh, I'm sorry. Not how much it weighs. Not getting into that yet. <laughs> Uh, how big it is, right? A bowling ball is going to hurt more than a marble. So the mass times the gravity. So it's going to hurt more on Jupiter than it would on the moon, right? Because on the moon, it's not being pulled down into your head as quickly. So you can almost say it's it's the weight. Um, that's what that's just what this is. The weight of the object times the height, right? Because you figure uh, if you drop something from up here. And if you drop, drop something from up here, by the time they reach the bottom, the ones, this one is going to have a lot more kinetic energy than this one, right? Because when this one reaches the bottom, it's going to have uh, this, like, it's going to build up to some speed. This one's going to have more time as it's falling to build up speed, so it's going to have more kinetic energy. And we'll find out that the one transfers to another, but I'm not going to get into that yet. Um, so... This actually kind of makes some sense, right? Um, we can, can just kind of say that uh, mass times gravity times height. It's uh, it's a relative. I mean, it just makes sense. So anytime you forget this, think about okay, um, I'm standing on some planet. How much is this going to hurt? Well, it's going to be the mass times the gra times the acceleration of uh, gravity uh, times the height. Or um, you can almost think of it as the weight of something times how high above your head it is, kind of thing. That's the kind of thing. And the neat thing about this is that we can actually do a couple really, uh, a, re a couple really cool things, actually. You won't hear me saying cool too much in physics, but... So say we have this weird... Actually, I don't like that one. Say we have this weird thing. And I want to find out what the speed... And this is uh, this has a height of 10. And I want to find out how fast it's going right when it's here, right at this point. And we'll say that's, uh, I don't know, 7 meters high. Well, here's what's actually really cool, and this gets into the law of conservation of energy. Basically, uh, what it says is that however much energy you start out with, you're going to end up with the same amount of energy. So it might uh, transfer between potential energy and kinetic energy, right? Like if you drop something, as you're dropping it... So let me write down the kinetic energy equation here. So it's mass times velocity squared over 2. My handwriting has gotten better. I know it has. Um, kinetic energy, sorry. So as you're dropping it, the height is going closer to zero, right? So this number is getting smaller, right? Because the height is decreasing. But as you, as it's falling, the speed is increasing. So this one picks up, and it happen and just so happens that uh, this one increases at the same rate that this one decreases, or vice versa. Um, so uh, what you end up getting, what you'll see a lot, is that uh, well, let me expand this. The uh, gra potential er energy because of gravity plus the kinetic energy are going to be equal to some constant, some constant c, maybe, um, or at least for that system. So the change uh, change in the GPE, the amount of this changes, say, maybe because the height's changing, plus the change in Ke, the amount that this is changing, equals zero. Why? Because if this is losing energy, the energy has to go somewhere, and it goes to the kinetic energy, at least in these simpler cases. Um, we're not, we're ignoring friction and everything. So, I mean, it should kind of make sense. If an object's losing speed, uh, and we're only looking at uh, gravity and not friction, remember, we're not looking at friction, so if it's just on a horizontal plane, like maybe this like line right here, if it's moving at, it, well then, if it has any kind of speed in this direction, or any kind of velocity, it's never going to slow down, right? Because we're saying that there's no friction. So if an object does slow down, that means that it's working against gravity. So if it's working against gravity, that means that it's going up. So the height is increasing. So as this goes down, this goes up. As this goes down, this goes up. If it's falling, it's increasing in speed. 
if it's rising, it's increasing in height, but it's decreasing in speed because it's slowing down. So then uh, you can look at this and say, okay, uh, here, what was the... Oh, and let's say that uh, our ball has a mass of 5. Whoops, that was a stupid move on my part. It has a mass of uh, 5 kilograms. And this is in kilograms, by the way. So, um... So, what, what do we do here? How do we go about doing this? Well, let's look at it this way. The kinetic energy, if it starts at rest, what's the velocity? Velocity is zero. So this, is, this whole thing is zero in this case. So at this point, uh, we can say that the kinetic energy equals zero. Oops. Kinetic energy equals zero. And then what else? Well, let's kind of find out what the potential energy because of gravity is. Oops, wrong thing. Let's take out our handy dandy calculator. Uh, okay, so our gravitational potential energy is going to be the mass, that's 5, right? Times gravity, so that's times our 9.81, that's our gravity on Earth. Hopefully that's familiar. Or, so, that's our weight right there, 49.09 newtons, right? And look at that, newtons times height is a distance, we actually do get a uh, work right here, or energy. So, that's, that's good that we see that we've got a force times a distance. Um, so we multiply that times the height, we get 10, so we end up with 490.5, so, um, let me put this in here, so, GPE equals 490.5, uh, let's just say 490, for the sake of, uh, time, or whatever, so, uh, then what do we know? Okay, so we know that now, the two of these add up to 490, no matter what. It can all be in. It, it can be 490 in kinetic energy. It can be 490 in gravitational energy, or it can be somewhere, uh, some combination of the two. But they're always going to add up to 940 as long as we're ignoring like friction and crap. So here's what's actually actually kind of cool. At this point right here, what is the um, what is the gravitational uh, potential energy, right? Well, that's our mass times our gravity, so that's our 5 mass times our gravity, times the height, right? The height, that's 7, so times 7. So now we get that, uh, we'll say 343. So the gravitational potential energy here is 343. And now look at this. We said that these two always have to add up to the same number, right? So that means that, well, what's 490 minus 343? We get 147. So, the, if these two add up to 490, these two have to also. So, that energy is conserved. And what's neat is that now, you plug this in. Well, now we can plug that in here. We have 147. That's the kinetic energy, right? Kinetic energy is equal to the mass, which is 5 times the velocity squared over 2. So, uh, we can say, divide both sides by, by the 5, and we get 147 divided by 5. Right, so 147 over 5. We just figured that out. And then if we multiply everything by 2, so that times 2 equals 50.8. And that, remember, this is velocity squared, so we just take the square root of that. This seems kind of kind of convoluted, so sorry. But uh, take the square root of that, and we get 7.66. And that 7.66 is actually how fast it's going at this point. So that's kind of neat, that no matter what the crazy curve of this point is, just by looking at the height, we know how fast it's going. Because we know how much energy it started with. We know its potential. We know its potential energy, and that turned into kinetic energy. So uh, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense. Potential energy is going to be the cause of a lot of uh, a lot of questions on the test. I'm guessing, but um, hopefully that helped. I'm probably going to do test videos now. But uh, whatever video I make next, I'll see you then.